Hey everyone, welcome back to Digital 6 Cover. Today's video topic is going to be about medical supplies. But for a lot of us that are just starting out prepping, we always hear we need medical supplies. And what type of medical supplies do we need? What kind of what kind of gizmo gadgets compared to stuff at home that we may have already that we really don't need? Uh, some stuff is just nice to have. But we're going to get into a few things and we're going to talk about them. Maybe some of the stuff that you should have in your medical kit. But a lot of people buy stuff because they've been talked into buying it, but they don't understand what it's for, how to use it, when you would use it. So let's do a little bit. We're going to do a sample, some samples of some stuff. We're not going to get crazy because in the medical field, there's a ton of stuff. So first things we're going to work on today is controlling bleeding and airway management. All right, so you went to the store, you bought some stuff that you thought was cool. Maybe you went to a gun show. You saw a couple tourniquets. You thought, okay, I've seen those. People are always talking about those. How, when, what, why, and all that kind of stuff. But let's just talk a little bit about equipment, right? This is a bandage roll. It's basically four and a half by 4.1 yards. We use this as a wrap to wrap around your head, to wrap around an arm, whatever the case is. And this is what we'll use. Now something that this works well, something that may work a little bit better is this one. It has like an adhesive on it where it sticks to itself. You'll see these, you know, at um, like tractor supply places for wrapping horses legs, that kind of stuff. But it's just basically a cohesive bandage. We're going to talk a little bit about OPAs. We're going to talk about basically Israeli bandages. If you haven't seen these, these work really good. They're uh, it's basically if you were to take one of these, right, that's already packed away in a nice little pack like this called Wound Stop, First Care Wound Stop. The same thing applies as if you were to have basically this one's sterile, but and that one was too until it got open. But it's basically a pad. It's five inch by nine inch. There's one in here. It's a very, uh, it's a bandage that's made to suck up blood or body fluids. And then we have these four by fours. Now these come in three by threes, two by twos, whatever the case is. But basically if you have a wound, say on your arm, and I need to stop the bleeding, I would apply a couple four by fours directly to directly to the wound right and then I could wrap this in some type of curlex or bandage roll or utilize this to stop the bleeding this stuff here is basically the same as this package this Israeli bandage here has a nice uh, bandage in here that's going to soak up all the you know soak up the blood you have the ability to wrap this around get a little bit of tension to help with pressure when, we, when we're stopping bleeding we're stopping pressure so if i have an arm and all i have is this but i have a bunch of people available i could have someone just hold pressure here real tight until hopefully the bleeding stops or until we can get a wrap around it so the person can be more mobile and not have someone attached to their arm. Now if things get really bad, then we talk about a tourniquet and you'll see these and you'll probably see them on a ton of different videos. But if for some reason you're not familiar with them, you know, I'll put it on my leg. So here's my leg. I have a wound. I'm going to go ahead and pull this tight. I can get it basically has velcro all the way around so that goes in there just to get rid of the extra and then there's this thing this is basically your mechanism of capturing pressure so I'm going to keep twisting this 
until the bleeding stops and then this will get jammed in there and lock in place I'll cover this up I'll write the time that it that I put this on now the bleeding should have stopped some of the things that we're hoping for is if I was to basically I would cut my pants off I would apply this on here with the bandage and then I would test basically my foot I would squeeze to see if the blood is going back into my fingernail this is this we call capillary refill basically you can see like the white of my fingers and then the blood comes back like that so if it's any longer than that you're basically you're, you're restricting the blood flow so that's how that would work does do we want this to be on here for hours and hours no do we want to undo it and take it off no we want to get the person to a medical facility as fast as we can so that's just one of the things so basically you saw one type one type there the Israeli bandage is pretty much similar this is made for more bleeding wounds uh, more of a just a wound management kind of thing but basically this would go over your leg right this is the part that has the hole in it that's bleeding I put this patch section here with all the extra it's basically like tampon material inside I'd wrap it around I'm gonna stick this through that hole right here widen it back up and then I'm gonna crank leverage on it so I'm gonna squeeze it nice and tight All right, so now it's wrapped. Now I can run a thinner portion, kind of just to put more direct pressure right in the center of that wound. And then I can spread this back open again, just to make it more comfortable, per se. You could use this for your forehead, whatever the case is. You got a big gash on your head. And then you get to the end here it has two open clips and you're going to take those clips turn it stick it in one side and then feed it to the other and now you have an israeli bandage this is going to stay in place pretty well it's going to it's going to probably bleed through a little bit you'll probably see a red some red blood here depending on how you know what if what arteries or veins or whatever I hit in my leg so that's basically that so that's the Israeli bandage get this thing off of here all right so that's basically easy real fast low down kind of way of stopping stopping someone from bleeding out now air management basically air management we need to do this so this is the Berman airway kit so there's six different sizes in here all right so the OPAs you might have went out and bought these and you're still wondering what the heck do I do with these damn things all right sorry for the lights in the background I'll try to get my head in the way here so it'll work <clears throat> Here's how we measure these. This is basically to keep your tongue back. This is basically going to go in your mouth and end up being like this, and you'll be able to you'll be able to respirate the patient having this open airway through here. This is where the air will go through. All right? So here's how you measure this. From the corner of your mouth to the tip of your ear. So that's the perfect size for me. Now you put this in a little bit different. So you're going to open the patient's mouth and you're going to do it up this is going to be up and as, as you get to the center you're going to turn it 
and then this will be here like this. This is going to help keep the tongue from falling back and blocking the airway. Okay. And that's basically what's going to happen. I would be laying on the ground as a patient right now, but that's basically how that's going to work. So uh, or, uh, oral pharyngeal airway. So the big thing is you make sure it's the right size. Tip of the mouth, tip of the ear. You go in upside, you go in the wrong way, and as you get to the midpoint, you're gonna turn it, and it's gonna go down like that. All right, so that's what you do with these. Then you can either put a mask on the patient and breathe for them. This will be in the mouth all the way to here, basically. You know, where the, it's basically like a baby's uh, pacifier. So it'll be right here. And then you can breathe through there. These are also here so that you can put a suction tube down there and get, you know, some vomit or whatever may have caused that. So if they vomit, you're going to you're going to need to clean this out, clean the airway out, roll them on their side maybe, suction them out, whatever tools you have available. If you don't have any tools available, you're probably going to have to roll them on their side, hopefully kind of sweep it out, whatever the case is. But that's that. All right, so for today's video, you learn two things. You learn how to stop bleeding by applying pressure and utilizing bandages and how to wrap them. Basically, you learn how to use an Israeli bandage. So if you wanna go out and buy these. Like I said earlier, if you don't wanna go out and buy these and you just wanna buy some, some bandages, and some bandage rolls it's the exact same thing so i have a i have a problem i have a problem same problem right here i put the four by four down i'll just use one of these real quick or i use a, i would use quite a few of these four by fours or i would use something that's made to capture a little bit more blood a little bit better okay I would take I would take this and I would wrap it tight tight as I can because you want to apply pressure that's how you stop the bleeding so I'm going to apply pressure okay say this keeps bleeding after we're done you can apply more four by fours and apply another one of these as well so I keep wrapping, I keep wrapping. Now I want some extra. So I'm gonna do this. I basically brought it back over or I can just keep wrapping and then tape it off. Or if I don't have tape, I can basically make, I can basically make a knot here like this. You know, and I can just tie that in a knot and be done with it. So that's another option. So having simple stuff. Now say you don't have the money to go out and buy this stuff. Get some old old bed sheets that you don't use anymore that are, you know, that are clean. This doesn't need to be sterile. You would want the stuff that's actually touching the wound to be sterile. And this is more of a like a stuff hits the fan kind of deal you know you're gonna have to use what you have but like strips of bed sheets would work perfect for this you know this may be like a hand towel you put it over it you run some bed sheets across you you got to do what with what you got so so that's one of the things you learned you learned how to use the cat tourniquet is the learn would be CPR, understanding how to breathe for somebody, doing chest compressions, and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to learn. It's fun to learn. It's a great feeling being able to help somebody who have the gear and don't know how to use it. You know, hit the subscribe button. There'll be more videos out like this. Hopefully these help you out.